It was an amazing day for Holly and Tom, and here they are. Holly, Tom, I think you can hear me now. We can indeed. It's taken about half an hour to sort out. <laughs> I'm very sorry, and I really, really appreciate your patience. Just tell me a little bit about the end of yesterday, before we talk about the races and what a sensational day it was. When you both got back into the car to, to go home yesterday, what, what did you say to each other? What, what was the conversation on the, on the way back home? Could you quite believe what you'd, you'd both achieved? I think we just laughed quite a lot, to be honest. <laughs> it was pretty surreal. Um, like we went out for dinner and we just sat there, kept saying, like, what is, like, why, how? Um, but, no, what a brilliant day. I mean, the whole, in particular, starting off the way it did was, was amazing. I mean, Holly, there'd been a lot of attention on your rides going into the, the meeting. We, you know, we'd all built it up and we sort of hoped against hope that you might be able to, to get at least one strike at, at the top level. How did you feel going into yesterday? Did you, did you try and channel that positively? Did you feel more nerves? Um, I just tried to treat it like a normal day, really. Um, I've been, you know, on quite a few of the big days now, and sometimes I find that if you, you can overthink it, but realistically, um, the best way I'm trying to deal with it is just to treat it like a normal day. And when you're when you're both preparing for a, for a big day where you're both competing, do you talk much about it beforehand, or do you just try and leave each other a little bit? <laughs> yeah, we didn't really talk about it too much. Uh, we went down down together, obviously, and um, like I think on the on the odd race, we just go, oh, are you, like, are you going to go forward on that? And, yeah, probably, and that's about as far as it gets. <laughs> but do you do you ask each other's advice about the horses you're riding? Do you try and do you try and help each other as well? I know you're competing against each other, but do you do you try and point each other in the right direction, Holly? Um, I'd be more so asking Tom for a bit of advice. He wouldn't really ask me. Um, we tend to try and keep keep out of each other's way, yeah, on a race day. So there was that lovely moment when when Holly won on on Glen Shield, Tom, where you were a bit further back in the field and you you weren't quite sure what had what had happened. Just talk us through what was going through your head at the time. Yeah, I mean, to be, to be honest, from behind, um, like obviously I was, I was a good way behind at that point. Uh, I actually thought Brando had won because he was the fast finisher and pulling up, he went by Holly. So, yeah, I went over the line, a bit disappointed. And then obviously I could hear that saying, well done. And I thought, oh, no, like I didn't, I didn't think she had won. And then uh, the camera was on Brando and like it, it, you couldn't really tell who had won. And Holly wasn't sure when I asked her. And then when they called it, I mean, like, there was a great shot of uh, a whole finding out. And I was just in front of her. And you hear it and you get like the, the elation hearing the uh, photo called Holly's Way was like an amazing and it wasn't even me riding the way <laughs> but um no I was so pleased and, and like what a legend of a horse to do it for for, for Archie Watson as well Holly tell me how much more this means to you that it was for Archie um no I'm sure it means just as much for Archie as it does for me it was um incredible for the pair of us both first group one winner um, I'm really just delighted that it was for Archie because obviously he's been a, a massive player in my success over the last few years. I um, lost my claim and he, um, you know, obviously I got a job there and he put me up on um, a huge majority of horses that a lot of um, trainers probably would have dropped me off of. Um, and that's what you need in a bus. Yeah, I was saying yesterday, uh, Holly, and, and you wouldn't have heard it, that if ever there was a case of action speaking louder than words, it was Archie because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't say a, a whole lot. He doesn't, he's not that demonstrative about it to, to us. And he's sort of saying, oh, I'm putting Holly Doyle up on it. He just got on and just gave you the rides. And it was that the, kind of the perfect way of, of playing it, really. Yeah, no, he, um, he actually, actually lets his actions speak louder than his words, obviously. But he, um, he's incredibly loyal to his jockeys and staff. So for that to have worked out yesterday, especially on a horse such as Glen Shield, which is um, such a legend, it was a dream come true for everyone. Do you think that, I mean, there's a tiny, tiny narrow margin. 
If you hadn't have had that real confidence going into the sprint that presumably you got from riding Trushan in the first race, do you think that might have made the difference, that you had so much belief going out to ride Glen Shield that that might have made the difference between winning and losing? Possibly. I mean, I always, when I ride um, Glen Shield, I always feel like I've got plenty of confidence because he tries so hard, he's very straightforward. And um, I remember discussing with, with Archie the night before what we were going to do, and we, just, we decided that was the um, way we were going to ride him um, yesterday. So I think once you start your day uh, on a nap like that, it really does help. And, and I... Because you're you're both here, it's a it's a it's a real privilege for us in a way because you can you can tell us why each other has, has achieved what what they've achieved. And, and Tom, when you when you now look at, at Holly riding, how do you think she's got from where she was, say, two years ago, to where she is now? Yeah, I mean, look, honestly, through through hard work and, and craft, like you know, she's woken up every day, gone and ridden out, gone racing, and tried to tried to turn up in the best form that she can every single day and you know she's she's worked very hard in the gym and, and things like that and you know stuff that people probably wouldn't normally think of but um I mean the the jump the last two years to the level that well you showed yesterday like it's it's unbelievable and and Holly when you got your two winners and then you you were second on Dan Mayo the day was going about as perfectly as you could have imagined <laughs> really uh, was it then? Was it then even, even more uh, exciting for you to, to see Tom win the Champions States? Did it, was it? Did you feel, God, I really want him to get a slice of this? Yeah, and no, it was incredible. Obviously, a day's been such a flag bearer for Tom and Mr. Haggis back at home. He's an absolute legend, also not dissimilar to Glenn, but for him to have gone and won that um, British Group One um, was incredible. And Dave seemed so up for it yesterday. We spoke to William a few moments ago, Tom. Uh, when this horse bounced out of the stalls, did you immediately get the feeling that this could be your day? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm repeating anything that William said already because I can hear him, but um, honestly, just, just seeing him in the paddock, he looks absolutely incredible. And, and cantering down, he felt in the similar form that when he won the Q2 down in uh, Australia, he was, he was sort of on the revs a bit and and uh, willing to try and bury me but um honestly incredible effort by the haggis team to get him there in that form because it, they've they've had a couple of years practice of getting him spot on for a particular day and um he's absolutely nailed it he, he never felt in better form yesterday and holly tom's sung your praises and, and and he's tried to tell us how how you've got to where you got to yesterday can can you do the same in in reverse and and try and work out the rise of, of Tom Marquand from your many, many years of experience? Yeah, obviously, I've um, known Tom for quite a few years now. And from day one, he's always been very driven, very, very dedicated, and he's always known exactly what he wants, and obviously got plenty of ability. Um, so he's not this, he, he's, he deserves everything he gets. Uh, I mean... It seems as though you're very kind of similar, similar personalities. Is is that is that really the case? Where's the where's the where's the yin and yang? Do you think here? <laughs> uh, there's no there's no yin and yang, but no, we are quite different. Like obviously, you know, is that, like everyone is, you have your own sort of personality and your own way to go about things. And um, yeah, I, I guess I guess we've got one thing in common that we know we know what we want to do and um, how we how we're going to go about it. So I guess that's probably where we come across quite similar. And Cornelius was teeing up the possibility that next year it's it's not impossible that you could actually be be fighting it out for a for a jockeys championship or in in years to come. Is is that something that ever crosses your mind, Holly? Um. Obviously, every jockey wants to be champion jockey. If I ever land in that position, obviously, I'll give it my all. But I've said in a few interviews now, um, I think some people think that um, certain jockeys can just pick and choose when they want to try and go for the championships. But um, for someone like me, I'm always trying to like dig deep and ride as many winners as I can. So this year, I probably couldn't have done any, any more than what I've, I've done. But um, maybe in the next few years, I, I might land in a position worthy of contending for it.
Is there anything about this year that surprised you at all? What was that, sorry? Is there anything about this year that surprised you? Or is it, is it did you think that this was, that, that yeah. what, what you've achieved was possible? Um, obviously, I, after the, um, the whole, whole situation was um, the coronavirus and, the, and um, the lockdown we had, I really didn't think that I'd be able to ride 100 winners this year, so it was surprising when I managed to do that. Um, and everything after that was has been, um, you know, a real shock to the system. I just, I don't know. I, we were all in the same boat starting off at, um, when the, the at the start of the season. So to have done um, the things that I've managed to do this year has really been a big surprise for me. And, and days off for you guys are are few and far between. Um, Tom was in here. You were in here with me two or three weeks ago, Tom, and you said that. I think you'd only had one day off since June, or, or if that. Now, today there is, I will double check, no flat racing in, in Britain. Uh, how, how do you, can you find a way of occupying yourself when, there's, when there is actually no racing on? Yeah, no, this day off is pretty welcome. Um, yeah, I think that was, I actually had my first day off before I came on a few weeks ago uh, in about four months, which is mad, but... Genuinely, I think that just shows, you know, the job is something that we wake up and do without even giving it a second thought. And I mean, how lucky are we to be part of that? Because I'd say there's plenty of people that live for, live for their two days off every week. And, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine being like that. So, I, I mean, our day off today is very welcome. Um, and I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll find a way to, to get through it. Well, I... I... I'm going to let you go because I, we've taken up enough of your time already. All I can say is congratulations to you both again. It was a you know, tremendous day and uh, fingers crossed it will be the first of many such days for, for you both. And I now feel thoroughly guilty that we've taken up at least an hour of your time <laughs> fiddling around with uh, technology. Uh, but, uh, but I hope you'll agree it was worth it. Thank you both very much. Congratulations. Subscribe to Racing TV to be notified when more Luck on Sunday videos are appearing online. And don't forget to join me for the show every Sunday morning from 9 o'clock with the best guests.